If you've been asked to have a HbA1c test or you're simply curious about how diabetes is diagnosed and monitored, then this video is for you. I'm Dr. Donovan and the HbA1c test plays a central role in both detecting type 2 diabetes and managing it over time. It gives an average of your blood sugar levels over the past few months, which can offer a much clearer picture than the one-off finger prick test. In this video, I'll explain what the test actually measures, why it's done, how often it's recommended, what your results might mean, and when the test may not be suitable. So what is a HbA1c test? Well, when sugar or glucose in your blood attaches to a protein in red blood cells called hemoglobin, it forms something known as glycated hemoglobin, or HbA1c. Now, the more glucose in your bloodstream over time, the more HbA1c is formed. Now, because red blood cells live for about two to three months, the HbA1c test gives an average of your blood sugar levels during that time. Now, it's a simple blood test, usually taken from a vein in your arm. You don't need to fast beforehand and no special preparation is required. So why is this test done? Well, the HbA1c test is used in two main ways. Firstly, to diagnose type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes, especially if you don't have any obvious symptoms. And secondly, to monitor how well your diabetes is being managed over time. It's also helpful for guiding treatment decisions. So for example, whether to adjust medication or change your lifestyle approach. Now in the past, HbA1c was only used to monitor people who already had diabetes. But international guidance now recommends it as a tool to diagnose type 2 diabetes in many people as well. So how often should the test be done? Well, if you've got type 2 diabetes, your HbA1c should usually be checked every three to six months until your blood sugar levels are stable, and then every six months if things remain steady. If you've just been diagnosed or your treatment plan has changed, your health provider might check it more often. Now, for people with type 1 diabetes, HbA1c is also measured every three to six months, depending on your care plan. So what do the results mean? Well, HbA1c results are reported in millimoles per mole here in the UK. Now, here's how to interpret your results. Below 42 means not diabetic. Between 42 and 47 is called impaired glucose regulation, or pre-diabetes, it means that you're at higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the future. 48 or above suggests type 2 diabetes, and if you've got the symptoms, the diagnosis is usually confirmed straight away. If not, you'll be asked to repeat the test within four weeks to be sure if you already have diabetes, and the aim is usually to keep your HbA1c below 48. This reduces your risk of long-term complications like eye disease, kidney problems, as well as nerve damage. Now that said, some people may be advised to aim for a slightly higher target, especially if tighter control leads to frequent low blood sugar episodes known as hypoglycemia. Now this obviously is going to vary from person to person, so it's best to have a discussion with your own doctor. So when is the test not suitable? Well, while HbA1c is a useful and widely used test, it's not right for everyone. In some situations, it can give misleading results. So for example, it shouldn't be used to diagnose diabetes in children and young people, pregnant women or women who've recently been pregnant, people suspected of having type 1 diabetes, people who've had symptoms for less than two months, those taking medications like steroids or antipsychotics that can actually raise blood sugar quickly, as well as people with certain blood conditions like anemia or hemoglobin disorders such as sickle cell or thalassemia. It's also not useful in people who've recently had a blood transfusion. Now, if you fall into any of these groups, your doctor may instead suggest an oral glucose tolerance test or potential other investigations instead. Now, are there other things that can affect results from the HbA1c test? Well, the answer is yes. Some conditions can make your HbA1c falsely high or low. You might get lower HbA1c results if you've had hemolytic anemia, significant blood loss, or certain rare medical conditions that shorten the lifespan of red blood cells. On the other hand, you might get higher HbA1c results if you're iron deficient, you've got certain kidney conditions, or you have a hemoglobin variant that affects how the test reads. Now, if your result seems inconsistent with your symptoms or your other test results, your doctor might repeat the test 
or again, use an alternative method. So in summary, the HbA1c test gives a long-term picture of your blood sugar control. It's simple, reliable, and it's an important part of both diagnosing as well as managing type 2 diabetes. If your levels are too high, it doesn't mean you failed, but it might mean it's time to review your current plan and see what can be improved. And as well as medications, this does involve lifestyle changes. Now, if the test isn't right for you, there are other options available. If you'd like to learn more about the HbA1c test or diabetes in general, I can recommend Diabetes UK for patient-friendly guidelines to HbA1c and diabetes management, as well as in the UK NHS Diabetes Advice for up-to-date national guidance on diabetes testing and care. And I've put lots more useful links in the description box of this video. If you found this video helpful, why not consider watching this video next?